Well, we made it out of China. <laughs> Didn't get arrested. Didn't get incarcerated. We're now yeah. stuck in traffic chaos in Nepal. <laughs> Maneuvering down this road is slightly like a giant jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> you have to kind of slot into one area while the truck goes past and you move on, go to another area, more trucks go past. Well, we, um, we haven't been long from the, uh, the border, only an hour or so's drive, and we're still going down this same enormous valley, and it is spectacular. It's such a change of scenery from, um, from Tibet. Well, our buddies on the bike uh, have suggested an alternative route to Kathmandu. Uh, it's meant to be a little bit longer, and apparently it's meant to be a better road surface. <laughs> <laughs> So our mission is actually finding out the balancing point of the conservations and finding the balance between people and the wildlife. We found that if we actually promote the ecotourism and promote the conservations and if that ecotourism business can bring the benefit to the local communities, then these communities can be convinced on the conservations of their landscape. Well, we are now off on the first leg of the itinerary that we put together with Naresh yesterday, which is heading to uh, the town of Bukhara. So this is a sort of like a high mountain conservation area. Uh, and it's the first leg of our three prong approach through Nepal. Gandruk is the last point on the road that we can get to. Um, from here we've got to take um, about, I think it's about an hour, maybe an hour and a half walk to get to the offices of the Annapura Conservation Project area. Actually nowadays we have around 100,000 visitors in Annapurna. So uh, from that we get around 2 million US dollars every year. And that money is given back to the communities for conservation and small development works, like plantation work, micro hydro projects, tea plantations, daycare centers. These are small things we call it development for the people. This should be the first daycare center in Nepal. <laughs> if there are kids within the home, then women are, can't be free. You know? so they cannot support us and at the same time, they cannot use their time to other purpose. So that's why this daycare center is established. Another one of the areas that ACAP have been focusing on is um, energy and they've got a couple of projects going in this area. Both of these projects actually tie quite closely into conservation because prior to them being introduced, uh, the local people relied much more heavily on firewood for their fuel, for their heating, for their cooking. And that was putting a great deal of pressure on the local forests and on the local habitats. But since these things have been introduced, the pressure over the last kind of 15 years has been great relief. And that leads to not only an improved quality of life for the people who are living here, but it also means uh, improved protection for the wildlife and for the local environment. A long time ago, when I was young, the most of the people they use a firewood. They took down all the trees. Right, okay. And now you can see the more, yeah, all around is green. Yeah. Even there's a big village right here. One of the best examples of how the National Trust for Nature Conservation and ACAP are helping to build a connection between people's livelihoods and the national park is in the tea plantations in the village of Bubla Wang. Here, money from the national park entry fee is being used to develop a local tea industry. And this not only improves local farmers' income, but it also strengthens their support for the national park and its conservation objectives. 
without the support of these local communities, this battle of conservation may not be successful. We are working not only for the Nepal, not only the people of this area. We are working, we are devoting for the well-being of all human beings and living beings in the whole wide universe, this universe. Because to improve the environment, a single person's effort is not enough.